everyone, Not Dead Yet here, and today we are counting down the top five boxing matches that you need to watch. Now, before this video gets started, I would like to shout out Lucas Shipman, aka Zany, here on YouTube. We had a conversation about a month, month and a half ago, where he was like, Oh, your channel's getting me really into boxing, and I would like to know what boxing matches were worth your time. And I was like, Hey, that's a great idea for a video. Uh, I am just getting to it now because, well, a lot has happened since that conversation, but, um,. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the idea, man. Uh, here you go. Finally making the video. So these um, fights are in no real particular order except for number one. So be sure to stick to the end for number one. And you are going to also want to stick to the end because we are doing our first giveaway on this channel. Yes, that's right. I am really excited for that. But you're going to have to stick to the end for the details. So without further ado, let's get into number one. So coming in at number 5 on our list is Muhammad Ali versus Larry Holm. Now the reason why this is so low on our list and why I put it first is because I want as many people as possible to watch this fight, and for a different reason from all the other ones. During this fight, Muhammad Ali was already beginning to suffer from Parkinson's disease and he gets spanked hard. Uh, the fight was stopped around the 10th round when Muhammad Ali's corner throws in the towel and a lot of people got really mad at Larry Holm for this they said he should have gone easier on Ali and this eventually uh, led to Mike Tyson avenging Muhammad Ali by beating the crap out of Larry Holm when he was way past his prime I think that's a complete disgrace and I disagree with it completely. I think if you watch the fight, Larry Holmes did exactly what he needed to do, given his situation, and he didn't even really want to do it. If you watch the fight through, it is very clear that Larry Holmes is landing punches at will and could have easily knocked out Muhammad Ali whenever he wanted, but he chose not to do it out of respect for the champ. People say, oh, he should have gone easier, you know? Like, it's clear that he's not himself. You should have gone lighter. It's a fight. What is he supposed to do? Throw the fight? That's a disrespect to Ali. I'm sure Ali would have been pissed if Holmes just threw the fight because oh you're because Ali was a very proud man and, and so are most boxers and it it's an insult to the opponent that you are fighting to throw a fight you are essentially saying I am way stronger than you I take pity on you here's the fight and another thing too is you honestly think Larry Holmes is gonna throw away his championship title for Muhammad Ali no he did exactly what he needed to do to remain champion he didn't humiliate Muhammad Ali by throwing the fight and he didn't humiliate Muhammad Ali by knocking him the fuck out like he really definitely could have I also want you guys to watch the post fight interview for this fight where Larry Holmes is bro has broken down and starts crying crying in the dressing room because it hurt him to do that to Muhammad Ali because he respected him so much. Muhammad Ali did not need to be avenged. In fact, I think people should avenge Larry Holm. I, I think his reputation took a bit of a dive because of this fight, and I think it's just due to people who are massively, massively um, uneducated on the situation. So, educate yourself. Take a look at the fight. Uh, see that Larry Holm could have easily knocked out Muhammad Ali whenever he wanted to. And respect Larry Holm for doing what he could in a very, very difficult situation. Coming in at our number four spot is George Foreman versus Michael Moore, and I love this fight. This is a great fight because in this fight, you are watching George Foreman, a 45-year-old man who had been out of the ring for 20 years, take back his heavyweight title. Yes, that is right, and it is an incredible thing to watch because throughout the entire fight, um... Moore seems to be withstanding a ton of Foreman's punches. And it's like, damn, Foreman was known for his power. What happened to him? Did age finally catch up to Foreman and take away one of the best things he had going for him, which was his power? That's certainly what Moore thought until, I think it was around the 10th round again, yeah, where Foreman finally decided to step on the gas and show Moore why he was given the ring name Big. And the look on Moore's face when he takes a hard shot from Foreman and realizes that Foreman had actually been holding back the entire fight, priceless. Absolutely priceless. I love it. Uh, what Foreman's uh, plan was throughout the entire fight is actually quite genius. He knew that if he went full force from the start, Moore would just run from him. He knew that he was older and didn't have the stamina and speed that, that he had when he was younger, and he knew that if Moore ran from him and tried to outpoint him, he would most likely win the fight. So what Foreman did was lull Moore into a false sense of security. Oh, Foreman's not as strong as he used to be. I can take his punches. And so he let him come on to him, and he took what Moore had until eventually Moore was tired. He couldn't run anymore. And then, boom, he showed Moore the true strength 
that he had. It's great because it's one of those like, it's the classic anime trope. It's the whole, oh, you fool. I've been hiding my true power level the whole time. And he pulls it off spectacularly. Uh, and it's funny because by the time Moore realizes what Foreman had done to him, it was too late. Foreman knocks Moore the fuck out and takes back his heavyweight title after a 20-year retirement. That is insane. It is a fight that greatly inspires me because I'm thinking if George Foreman can come back after a 20-year retirement, and take back his heavyweight title at 45 years of age. Me, at 21 years old, after a two-year retirement, can definitely make a return to the ring. And it just inspires me to keep pushing, because when I think, like, oh yeah, what happens to me? What about me? What if, you know, I'm not as good when I step back into the ring? I think of Foreman, and I go, he was able to take back his title at 45. I definitely got this. So please, take a look at this fight. Uh, you're not going to regret it. Coming in at our number three spot is Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas was the first person to knock Tyson the fuck out and it is a beautiful thing to watch. Why? Because Douglas wasn't scared. Mike Tyson often won a lot of his fights well before stepping into the ring because most of his competitors were terrified of him. Douglas wasn't. What happened was um, Douglas's mother actually passed um, early on before the fight started and so you know, you know, a couple days before or a day before, I'm not entirely sure. And so Douglas was coming into the fight with that in his mind. And I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, but I read somewhere that Douglas's la mother's last words were, my son is going to be heavyweight champ of the world. And then she died. So he's going on with that burden of his mother dying, saying that he's going to be heavyweight champ of the world. And he wasn't scared. He was ready to die. If you want to see the determination of a man who has no fear and is willing to die in the ring, watch this fight. Because it's a beautiful thing. Because uh, you can see it in the way he fights, the way he moves. It's this, if I die in this ring, I want to be able to face my mother with pride and say that I gave it everything I had. Douglas stepped into the ring with a monster that people said couldn't be beat. And he looked at that monster and said, you're not a monster, you're a man. Let's see if the man lives up to the legend. I will outlast you. And that is exactly what he did. He went toe to toe with the legendary Mike Tyson. Most people couldn't make it out of the first round with Tyson. Douglas went eight rounds with Tyson and eventually, when Tyson finally started to get tired, he knocked Tyson out and it is a beautiful thing to see. It, it, it's, it's inspiring. It, it's, this, it, it's the determination of a man who won't quit. I am not going down. I will outlast you. I will beat you. Everyone said that you can't be beat. Everyone said you're this god. You're a monster. You take down everyone. You've made people quit on your stools. You've broken cheekbones and shattered ribs. I don't care. Break my cheekbones, shatter my ribs, I will make it to the end of this fight, and I will emerge victorious, and that is what Buster Douglas did that night. It is such an inspiring fight. It, it, it is two men giving it their all, and the determination of a man who, who put everything, including his life, on the line to get that fight, uh, get that title. It is a beautiful thing. So please, do yourself a favor and watch Tyson vs. Douglas. All right, coming in at our number two spot, one of my personal favorite matches of all time, and it's an old one, Jack Dempsey versus Jess Willard. This fight is known throughout boxing history and boxing fans as the most brutal beatdown in boxing history. Jess Willard was the champion, and Dempsey was the challenger. Dempsey was six inches. No. Dempsey was six inches shorter and about 60 pounds lighter. Willard had never been knocked down before, let alone defeated. And so, Dempsey steps into the ring with Willard and just beats the ever-loving shit out of him. It is not even funny. He knocks him down, gives Willard his first down in the first 30 seconds of the first round. 
I believe in that first thing he knocked out a couple teeth and broke his cheekbone. The fight lasted four rounds where Willard couldn't get up from his stool and had to forfeit. Um, the injuries that Willard sustained during this fight is absolutely insane. Uh, off the top of my head, he had his jaw broken on both sides, his nose broken in three places, he was missing multiple teeth, I'm pretty sure he had a cracked eye socket, broken cheekbones, he had like two cracked ribs, three broken, and it's, to me, it's, one, it's just the brutality of it. It's the beauty in the brutality. It, it is pure, brutal boxing, because especially in those days, um, boxing back then was a lot more similar to what BKFC is now. It's, the rules were a bit different, and the gloves were lighter, etc. And these men are fighting for their meals. So, again, this, this wasn't the kind of more polished sport we see today. Um, but one of the things that really inspires me about that fight, one, is I'm a shorter guy, so I love rooting for the underdog. You know how many times I've heard, oh, dude, he'd kick your ass. I don't care if you're a boxer. He's got 60 pounds on you and 6 inches on you. Like, yeah, okay, tell that to Willard. But here's the thing, I have an immense respect for Willard, because back in those days... When a fighter went down, you didn't actually have to go to the neutral corner. A neutral corner is a corner that doesn't have a coach in it. Back then, you could just stand over the fighter as he tried to get up. So I want you to picture this. Imagine this. You are Jess Willard. You have never been knocked down before, let alone defeated. You are the heavyweight champ. And you are fighting someone 6 inches shorter, 60 pounds lighter. And he does that to you. You get battered like that. Again... Broken cheekbones, cracked eye socket, nose broken in multiple places, jaw broken to both sides, missing teeth, cracked and broken ribs, and you're lying on the ground. And the man who did that to you is standing over you, taunting you, telling you to get up so he can do it to you again, so he can hurt you some more. And you decide, yes, I am going to get up. I want more. After all of that, he kept getting up. He made, most of those injuries were sustained in the first round, and he made it to the fourth. Do you understand the amount of heart that you need to do that? I have immense respect for both of these fighters. Jess Willard and Jack Dempsey are two of my favorite boxers of all time, period. And that is the fight that cemented these two as absolute legends. Watch it. You will not regret watching any of these fights, but this is a beautiful thing. It's, it's, because it, it, it's, it's one of those, it, it's a, it's a beautiful car crash. Because Willard walked out of it, I don't even know if he did walk out of it, to be honest, looking like he was in a terrible car crash. And yet you can't, you have to respect it. How can you not? So go look at what true toughness and strength is in Jess Willard, and go take a look at true brutality in Jack Dempsey. And finally, number one, my favorite boxing match of all time, arguably, there's a lot of great boxing matches, a lot of great ones, but my personal favorite and the one I recommend to most people, and to any boxing fans, this one should be obvious, Thomas Hearns versus Marvin Hagler, aka The War. And it is named a war, or the war, for a reason. If I had to summarize this fight, it's three rounds of two men that go at each other, start punching, and do not stop. It is a beautiful thing. It is a mix of the brutality that I talked about in the Dempsey fight, the uh, style and the skill that I think encompasses boxing as a whole. It's the heart and the determination of the Buster Douglas fight. It is beautiful. It, it is everything coming together in harmony to make what I think is one of the best boxing matches you could ever watch. It's even short. People are like, oh, I can't watch a 45-minute boxing match. This is three rounds, and it is three rounds of absolute magnificence. It's, it's skill. It's aggressive counterpunching. They're slipping punches left and right, barely dodging punches. The punches are grazing their head, and these are knockout punches, and they're returning fire their own. It is majestic. 
It is one of the most majestic things you can ever see. It's, it's, it's skill and brutality, determination and will, respect and, and, and desire to win. It, it's, it's beautiful. And what I love about this fight, one of the, one of the most amazing um, shows of sportsmanship ever in this fight, because what happens is Thomas Hearns actually breaks his hand in the second round. And he doesn't think of quitting. He continues on into the third round and actually ends up getting knocked out. But when he comes to and, you know, the fight's over, he told his corner not to let anyone know about his broken hand because he didn't want to take away from Hagler's victory. That is sportsmanship right there. And again, when we talked about the pain that Willard faced in his fight with Dempsey, but Hagler was actually fighting back. Or sorry, Hearns was actually fighting back against Hagler. Can you imagine how much pain it must have caused him to throw his right hand? And yet he did it without any hesitation. He kept attacking. If you watch the fight, you see that it's, it's a constant back and forth. When Hearns breaks his hand, you would not know. He keeps attacking. Can you imagine how much pain that would, it must have caused him every time his right hand thudded against any part of Marvin Hagler? It's beautiful because... Um, Thomas Hearns was known for kind of being able to control his opponent's guard with his jab and his also amazing flicker jab. He was great at controlling uh, both his opponent's um, center of balance as well as the rhythm of the fight with his flicker jab, which he would use to set up his powerful chopping right hand, which again, that was his power punch. I believe he broke his right hand. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe he broke his right hand. So can you imagine how much pain it must have caused him every time his power hand landed and broke his hand even more and Hagler on his part master of footwork and stance switching so what he could do is if he was fighting orthodox and his left hand got tired he could switch to southpaw and give his left hand a break and keep punching he didn't have to stop he was relentless it, it is a beautiful mix of everything it it is a war for a reason and it is a beautiful war between two men who are de determined to win. It is a great fight. If any, if I were to show one person what is boxing, introduce me to boxing, it would be this fight. So if you only watch one fight out of all of them, watch Thomas the Hitman Hearns versus Marvelous Marvin Hagler, aka The War. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go and check out the video. I will link them all in the description below, as well as a breakdown from the Modern Martial Artist, if I can find one. He is a great channel that breaks down fights and really kind of spins it into a narrative. He's a great storyteller. But now I'm sure we're going for what you're all here for, the giveaway. Yes, so why did I decide to do a giveaway? Well, uh, obviously there was that whole drama revolving around myself, Black Thor, and Sam Does Fitness. And when I posted my first video on the subject, I was ready to lose everything. Because I've been in situations before where I've discussed political opinions, and people didn't like that, and so they tried to attack my reputation, and people who should have supported me, who knew the truth, turned their backs on me. Because it was more lucrative to do so, whether for monetary reasons or for... Um, social reasons, social status. Oh, I don't want to associate with him anymore. He's got a bad rep. And so on YouTube, especially where rep is a big thing that can actually lead to monetary gain, I expected to lose a lot. I expected, you know, people to just believe the lies that were said about me, no matter what I said. I expected people to dislike my political views because I had to put my political views on display in order to prove my innocence. So I expected people to hate me for that and just leave. I was ready to lose upwards of 300 subscribers. I was ready to lose my entire subscriber base. I was ready to go back down to 30. Uh, I was ready to lose connections with fellow YouTubers and lose friends and all of that. And that didn't happen. Uh, you guys supported me. You guys rallied behind me. And, um, the support was more than anything I could have ever hoped for, thought for, expected. Um, and I can't thank you guys enough. So I want to do something to thank you. And thanks. So in, thank you for being an awesome audience. Thank you for supporting me. And I wanted to give back. Now, I'm poor as fuck. So I can't really give away anything like Coach Greg's cookbook or like 80 cars like Mr. Beast can. But what I can give away is my time. 
And while it may be nowhere near as valuable as Sam does fitness's time, I still charge about $50 an hour for personal coaching, which means I'm giving away a $100 value with this giveaway. Yes, what I'm giving away is a two-hour boxing lesson with me over Zoom, Skype, or whatever other video calling device you want to do, Discord, Instagram Live, whatever. Um, yeah, it's a two-hour class with me. Doesn't matter what your skill level is, I will teach you. If you are a super advanced boxer, we will talk things like strategy, ring positioning, special punches, maybe even things like guard manipulation, uh, stance switching, uh, special moves and everything else, everything in between. Uh, if you're a complete beginner who has never boxed before in your life, two hours is not... Two hours is enough for me to teach you the basics of boxing, the mechanics of the jab, cross, hook, uppercut, basic foot movement, and very basic head movement. No matter what I teach you, I will also give you drills to take home with you to help improve whatever I have taught you. And uh, if you're somewhere in between super advanced and extreme beginner, we'll figure out exactly what I can teach you and go from there. It'll be two hours of boxing with me. How do you enter? Easy. All you have to do is put in the comment section below. Well, first of all, like and subscribe, obviously. I have no way of figuring out if you do those two things, but do it, please. It, it helps feed my ego. Uh, but yes, like and subscribe, and then comment down below your personal favorite boxing match of all time. If you do not have one or don't know, Google one. You can say Logan Paul versus KSI. You can say Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. You can say whatever you want to say, as long as you put two boxers down in the description below fighting each other who have actually had an actual match. Uh, how I will do the draw is most of my videos get, like, cap out on views after two days. So... I'll give you an extra day. After three days, I will film myself picking the winner. What I will do is, however many comments there are, let's say 50, I will take zero and then one plus the number of comments and ask Siri to give me a number uh, between that. So let's say there's 50 comments. Like I said, I'll go, hey Siri, give me a number between zero and 51. And then Siri actually activated. And then Siri will give me a number between 1 and 51, let's say it's 25, I will go starting from the top comment and go from 1, 2, 3, all the way to 25, and the 25th comment will be the winner. Also, comment your Instagram tag or any other way I can get a hold of you um, so we can kind of plan this out. And uh, yeah, make sure you comment the boxer, uh, the, the fight. Make sure you comment your favorite boxing match because if you don't, I will assume you either do not want to win or you are a bot. Uh, and if I land on someone who didn't comment say, Logan Paul versus KSI, I will, or whatever other boxer you want, I will assume that it is a bot or they don't want to win and ask Siri for another number. So make sure you comment a boxing match that you like. Other than that, uh, you can comment as many times as you like, enter as many times as you want. I don't really care. Um, I just want to be able to give back to you guys. So thank you very much for being such a great audience and... Thanks for being in my corner. I, I didn't, for a long time, I thought I didn't really have anybody in my corner, but it seems like uh, the roughly 700 people I have watching me are all in my corner. So thank you for being my corner man. And uh, may the best corner man win, I suppose. But until that draw happens, I'm not dead yet. And if you aren't either, there's always a tomorrow waiting for you.